Today we're reviewing, we have the PXG cavity back versus Gen 6. The Gen 6 has always been their staple type golf club. Mm -hmm. Well, not Gen 6, it's 4 before is Gen six. 5, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Which, by the way, when are we stopping with that? What are we gonna get to, Gen 15, before we change the name? What are you gonna, are you Apple? What, the <laughs> I, iPhone 14? Can we just call it iPhone? Can we just call it? The new iPhone? The new, the new Gen? I don't know. Maybe just do like 04, 11, 17 or something like that. Yeah. Some crazy name. I don't know. Side point. All right. Gen 6 is obviously wildly successful. The technology yeah. in this is at an absolute 10. Awesome marketing. They're doing they a great job They have a new cavity it. back, though, which we've done a review on. And we got fitted. We got fitted. At Both of these are fitted Check for us. Check out that video. The question is, is now that they're in multiple spaces with their irons, which one's the best for you? We're going to test them. I think you'll be a little surprised by the answer. Yeah. And we're testing it from a little bit of variety, an amateur yeah. standpoint. Like we've said before, we are not professionals. We are mid handicappers. Yep, 15, 10, yep. 9. Did you sink into the single digits? I'm in the single digits You're now. You're starting to creep towards not a mid handicapper anymore. I love it. I'm trying to get there. Well, you have to stay in the mid handicappers for the sake of our channel. Rick Shields, that YouTube Masters, we would like an opportunity to have a conversation about that. So please. Yeah. I he's know you're watching not. our videos a lot, <laughs> yeah, I just Mr. Shields. Say, I don't think he's watching this video. He hates PXG, so maybe yeah. he is. Our followers, maybe just shout out Rick Shields to get us in there. Okay. What are we go. gonna do today? Let's roll. All right, don't forget if you're All right, in the Denver, Colorado area. All right, guys, please Denver, don't forget if you're in the Denver metro area, area, please come down to our showroom. Get come. fitted for some clubs to yourself. Sure. Email us to the email on the YouTube channel. You can set up an appointment to sit down with Trevor and I, get fitted for some clubs, or just come in and get some swag, some balls, some gloves. And we have a lot of a lot of people tell us like, hey, thanks so much. Just because of your video, I bought Gen 6. Just buy them from us. Yeah, we appreciate that. Thank you for appreciate shouting us out. It, but Give us the order at least. At least if we educated you, at least tell us. Yeah. Come on. Or tell PXG. Yeah, tell PXG, just that they'll punch our name in and we get a little commission. Yeah, That's give us a little kick, kickback. Shameless plug, but yep. check out our barbecue channel if you haven't already. Okay. Supports everything. Benefit of Gen 6. Yeah. You want me to go? Yeah. Tell okay. me the pros. So the biggest things with the Gen 6 is going to be polymer infill. What do they call it? Uh, Procore. Procore infill. Core. Do I need to get out of the yeah. way, Chris? Let me show them. Aesthetics, I'm not partial to one over the other. Both about, blacked out. Both look fantastic. I like the black. Yeah. Okay. Tell me the benefit. So we have the infill. Polymer infill, so you're going to have more forgiveness, more controllability as far as your miss hits are going to go straighter. Um, but with that, like most uh, slight improvement clubs, you're going to have lack of controllability as far as shaping shots and lack of feedback. Um, so you want to know when you're getting toes. On the positive, I don't think there's a softer feeling club than the Gen 6. Can I say something? I have yet to hit a softer club than the Gen 6. One that feels better. Yeah, feels better than the Gen what am I missing here? Well, if you watch my video on the cavity back, I personally like the feedback of knowing what my miss is that day. Like I can tell if I tow it, if I'm pushing it, if I'm pulling it, I can feel it. And then you can play it. You Gen can 6, it. right before we started this video, just so you guys know, um, people are always like, oh, you didn't warm up. We do warm up. Yeah, we warm up. I warmed bit, up quite a bit and I duffed one like 100 yards with it a seven like iron. You felt so good. <laughs> it felt great. <laughs> That's felt how like good this club feels. Yeah. But and it's just, also a lot more forgiving. Yeah. One of the best irons that I've hit to date is the Gen 6. Yeah. Gen 5 was great. Gen 6 is even better. Slightly, but it is better. So we're introducing a new thing today. We're going to hit 10 of each like we always do. Yep. Seven but today iron. we're going to be focusing on Smash Factor. Now Smash Factor has to do with efficiency. And it's basically ball what speed. Is, yeah, tell us what that is. What is the smash to. factor? It's ball speed divided by club head speed. Equals MC squared. Equals smash factor. So ah. ideally we want a smash factor of a 1.5. That's so the perfect world. Let's say this, we're not gonna do this with a seven iron, but for the simple math, driver. You swing a driver 100 miles an hour, a very efficient club is gonna give you 150 mile an hour ball speed. And then of course on miss hits, that's gonna go down. So the idea is, is when we have a miss, how much ball speed do we lose? Because we're still swinging a driver 100 miles an hour. Even if your swing maybe isn't as good. Well, if we miss the ball. Right. So we're still swinging 100 miles an hour, 
but if we're off the toe, we're gonna lose ball speed. I see. How much ball speed do we lose? And that's how we factor in the smash factor. So um, especially these two clubs versus each other, we really wanna pay attention to forgiveness. I think for mid handicappers, that's probably the most important quality we're looking for. Yeah, shot shaved. Um, we've been fitted for both of them. I'm already gonna get a little cat out of the bag. I personally prefer the feel of the cavity back, but I'm not saying I would necessarily play that yeah. over the Gen 6. I'm actually curious to see what the data says. Yeah. So we're paying attention to efficiency and miss hits today. Yeah. Not, we know how far they're gonna go. They're different lofted, so that's gonna be a little off. We're not looking for ball height. We're fitted for these yeah, for optimal. We're not going like crazy with the spins data. and all that stuff. We're paying attention specifically to smash factor today yeah. because I think that's what's gonna keep balls in the fairways and keep them on the greens. You got your club stickered up? Yep. All right. Well, also, one last yeah, thing. Sorry about that. Because this is so forgiving, like all forgiving irons, when we center it and flush it, we can get a rocket ball. Yeah. And I'm curious to see if we're going to get any rocket balls today. Lofted. Like, let's say your seven iron typically goes 170 or 160. If you flush it, now it could go 180. Yeah. Could we fly? Is the cavity back going to give us more consistent yardages? Let's find out. You can go first, Tate. Okay. All right, guys, we're going to start with the Gen 6. Like Trevor said, there's some differences here. Smash factor is huge. Only one thing to do, and that's to put 10, 10 swings on it. So this is the first shot. So I'm just going to show you this. So Tate was off center. Not bad, but he's off center. He's a little toey. Ideal smash factor, we want 1.5. That means we're being maximum. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. It's allergy season. <laughs> Means we're maximum efficiency. So this was a miss hit, and he's at 1.37. I wouldn't actually. I wouldn't call it a miss hit. I would just call it a slightly slight toe, slight yeah. toey. What hopefully Tate's a lot better than me right now. I don't know if he's going to give us one, but I want to see a bad miss and see what our efficiency rating is and how much ball speed we have and how far it carries. Yeah, like I'm. So for instance, that that shot right there, I'm mad on the course. But in reality, that might be greenside bunker or left rough. Yeah, you pulled it's it. Not a, it's not OB or water No, or it's in play. Yeah. And for mid handicappers, I think that's what we're after the most, right? Yep. A Get on the green play. as fast as you can. Okay, so Tate hit that one very fat. Yep. But he was carried 159 and 186. This is set to um, 5200. Altitude, though. 5200 altitude. So. You know, at sea level, we're getting less than 10% of that or 90% of that. So yes, that's probably like a 1.29 efficiency on a miss hit. Now, I'm curious, we really won't know how forgiving that is until we can get a similar miss hit with the cavity back. Yeah. Okay, so I decided to change it up last second. Sometimes I'm kind of a director. Yeah. I'm like Ben Affleck. I act and direct mm. at the same time. Like a Spike Lee. No, he doesn't really act unless it no. must be the shoes. That's the only commercial. No. I'm like more like Ben Affleck. Yeah. Kinda. Look like him too. Yeah. Especially in Batman when he's all jacked. Yeah. Swear to me. No, that's... <laughs> that's Christian Bale. That's Christian Bale. Okay. okay. Let's get to what we did. So I decided, let's see, let's get a visual of how bad our misses are. You guys have seen so many videos of us on the driving range. This is a hole at Pebble Beach. It's 189 yards. We set hole it to sea 12. level. We set it to sea, or not sea level. We set it to altitude so it will match our seven iron. Um, and this will give us an idea of how far away from the green we actually are on miss hits, which is going to, I think, help us give us some feedback on, on uh, which one's going to be more forgiving. Visually. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And see, this will definitely tell us if we have any rocket balls. Yeah. Data shouldn't be much different. Data won't be no. different at all. Tate hasn't had a good one yet. Tate's been playing Gen, Gen or PXG, Gen 5, now Gen 6, for two years. He's been shooting in the 70s, 70s with him. The reason he's not hitting it good, it's not in the bag anymore. You're going to have to stay tuned to see what's in his bag. That one's a good one. Oh, yeah. 1.33, oh, yeah. still not a great smash. But it, that's, I mean, that's a birdie putt. That's a 10-foot birdie putt. Yeah. I'll be honest, Tate. Those lines out there look like uh, Spider-Man was in town or something. Yeah. <laughs> Everything moved right except for the last one. Man, what a terrible outing. Sorry but you had that. terrible, terrible shots. Every, every single one of them is a chip and a putt. Yeah. Well, three of them are on the green. The other seven are a chip and a putt. Yeah. Everything's in play. 30%, that's not good. I mean, 190 yard par three, that's a long par three. All right, Trev, let me change this over right. to you. I'll go gen six now. Now, if you guys know, 
the PXG clubs have been on my bag for a while. Um, and my biggest complaint has been just feedback. You know, the feedback I'm getting on the course with my miss hits. Now, I'm a worse player than Tate. So I feel like the Gen 6s are going to benefit me around the green more than they're going to benefit him. Oh, that's that's really that's bad. That's called City. So that's that's as bad as it gets. And it's uh, <laughs> 1.27. I mean, that's almost hosel. And I'm yeah. chipping a putt. Yeah. Trevor, I'll, just a real quick side note. Let me jump in here. Trevor, you had his first match play in competition first yesterday. First competitive match ever yesterday. Lost by a, a, a stroke. Match play. By a hole. Lost by a hole on the 17th hole. Mostly because I panicked. I missed a five foot putt. Yep. Okay, so we just finished our Gen 6s. Um, not our best outing. You can see the webbing is all over the place. Um, like Trevor and I said though, we were focused a lot more on smash factor. Um, and I think we got that data. We got the data we needed. I think what's important for the audience is not so much to focus on all the analytical stuff. If you want all the analytical stuff, we have that in some of our other videos. And we have that in our fitting video. This is more efficiency in all, all 20 shots, as bad as they were. Everything's a chip and a putt. Everything's in play. Everything. Yep. That's all right. So Tay had a higher ball flight, but that's also, it's a 33 degree seven iron. So the loft is 33 degree. Your seven iron is set to, th your gen six is set to 30. 1.3 only. Oh, yanked it. That's going a mile. It's definitely, so far, if a you two, pulled it, that gave you good yardage. And if you're an amateur out there, mid handicapper, and you have a green that's 190 yards, and you're just off pin high on the rough to the left, you're happy with that. Yeah. That's a hard par three. Oh my gosh, that's two. Oh, that's birdie. That's touch them all time. Yeah. That's touch them all time, 1.34. So it, it's not showing up as efficient, but in some of it's the player. It's a more de-lofted club, which I think suits Tate's swing more. He needs a little more ball flight out of the club. That one is toey. So you lost some, obviously lost some yardage on it. Still putting though. Go, go, go. There's my data. That is what it is. Better spin rate, better launch angle. But that's because I had my Gen 6 weakened. So my Gen 6 is at 32 degree. This is a 33 stock. I pulled it. Oh, that's good. Keep drawing. Wow, it's just dead straight. It's perfect. Laser beam. I high. see what you did. You wanted to take the bunker on the left out of play, so you just went straight. Yeah. <sighs> because you can shot shape more, it's for me, my miss is a, a draw on my irons. It's easier to overcook it. Whatever your miss is, you can do it easier probably with the cavity back. Your miss, because you, you normally play a small fade. Yeah. So, all right. Let's see, let's just focus on a, a fit. well, blindly before you go into it, I think, you can tell both of us preferred what? The cavity back. Cavity back, better now, ball flight. I have a different finish that I'm not gonna go until the end, but I think I know what I would do. Okay, um, I'll just say this. I prefer the cavity back because I like the feedback it gives me on the course. I'm gonna tell you before we even look at the efficiency, I can guarantee you it's not as efficient. And I'm gonna say this. I know Tate's gonna prefer the cavity back. I prefer the cavity back. Tate's a nine. So he's starting to creep away from the uh, mid handicap. I'm a 15. My ball striking, I don't mean to sound braggy, my ball striking is more like a 12. I'll take a dump out on the golf course. Yeah, with a four all the time. time. Yeah. Yeah, and I'll have a couple quads. Yeah. So ball striking, I'm more like a 12. OB off the box. I would say if you're 17, 18 plus, you're gonna prefer the gained distance you get with Gen 6. The gained distance, the softness, yeah. the forgiveness on the misses, it's gonna be better. Let's get the data pulled up here, brother. So, my Gen 6, I averaged an efficiency of 1.3. Which is not bad at all. No, that's good. Yeah. Now my cavity back, 1.31, but that's because 
this is a more lofted club and I, I just do better with a 33, better 34 degree seven iron. I do. Yeah. So you I just, you really I was do. more efficient with it because of the way the clubs are, which is a little tip for you. Don't, especially if you're kidding a club, whether it's Mizuno, Mizuno sells a seven iron that's 28 degrees. They also sell a seven iron that's 32 degrees. Tailor made Cobra, PX, PXG doesn't. They sell seven irons that are 34 degrees. That's a six degree swing. So you can't go hit a 28 degree seven iron and be like, wow, I gained 20 yards in distance. That's because it's really like a six iron. Yeah, it's not a seven it's iron. it's a six iron to a seven iron, or even sometimes a six iron to almost And like no one an thinks iron. about that. Yeah. Nobody talks about that. They but just it think seven to iron to seven it. iron. So I actually was more efficient with the cavity back, but I, that's because I feel more comfortable with it. I prefer the feedback it gives me. I prefer the 33 degree loft. Yeah. It's just a better club for me all for the way you. around. Yeah, absolutely. I agree completely. All right, Toph, Gen 6 for me is a 1.3. Sorry, I said Chris, even though Trevor's doing it. That's okay. 1.3, not oh. terrible, not upset about it. Cavity back, 1.31. Holy cow, our data is identical. The data is identical. Even though I stuck seven out of 10 on my cavity backs on the green. Yes, but I will say this, what efficiency doesn't take into account is we both had the furthest shots we hit was with the Gen 6. Yeah. It's because it's de-lofted and it's more forgiving and it's more prone to rocket balls. So those rocket balls perform well according to efficiency. Yeah. This is just me and that everybody's different. My recommendation for you at home is if you're a 15 and under, I think you would prefer the cavity back. Yeah. If you're a 15 and above, I would say you prefer the Gen 6. Now that's a blanket statement because sometimes like me, maybe you're a, a 15 handicap, but you're a really good ball striker and you can't chip and putt or yeah. whatever it is. Yeah. Okay. So if it's me, if I'm building my bag today and I'm going PXG head to toe, this is the configuration I would do. I would do three iron, four iron in the Gen 6, three iron, four iron Gen 6, five through pitching wedge cavity back. Why okay. would I do that? Those big irons, I. I'm actually okay with that extra distance. You're not really going for the green. Right. On the three it's a long par five or like a 340 yard par four. Or Would you four. even do uh, a five iron in a gen six? The problem with a five iron is five iron. You start a lot of par threes start coming into play, especially if you're playing from the tips. There's a lot of par threes that you're pulling five iron and I don't want yeah. launchers. But what about ask me? You can ask me. Don't be afraid. In a three and four iron. Like I, I don't even play a three iron. Yeah. I'm not good enough. If you were gonna do a four iron, wouldn't you do a driving iron? You could, but like yesterday, like for instance, we have a, a, a hole here that you're way elevated and it's only three or 240 to the pin with slope. That was my three iron. Mm. I don't know. If you're at sea level, I definitely think we would play three iron more. But here at our altitude, we get the ball so far. I would play, I play a three hybrid person. Yeah. Okay. Driving iron's nothing to scoff so, at either. Check out that video. I think for us, we are cavity back all the way. Now here's a here's a caveat I do want to say. Caviar. Gen six, Gen six me. In the hollow bodied foam filled clubs, PXG is one of the leaders in that marketplace. If not the leader. I might say that. Yeah. Yeah, I think I would say that. Here's the dilemma though. If you're good enough for a cavity back, should it be a PXG? Now you're opening up a can of worms to a boatload of competition. There's a lot of cavity backs out there. We There's got not Taylor a whole made, lot of polymer. Cobra, filled. Srixon, Mizuno. Mizuno. Some of the best irons in golf. Two, two threes are fantastic. Can this keep up with the best irons in golf? Here, they are by far the leaders. They're they're a big fish in a small pond. Here we're a, a small fish in a big pond. Don't tell me but they can they be that. the biggest smallest fish in a big pond? But <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I, I lost myself there. <laughs> no, I'll keep that in there, Toph. But if you're in this category, is Gen is uh, PXG even the way to go? That means only one thing. Another video? Yeah. Right <laughs> in my mind. Another video. So we have the top five driver video coming up. We got what's in the bag video coming up. I know we've been saying that, but these videos take a long time to make, especially our top fives. We cannot get it wrong. No. And we so, honestly are battling it ourselves. If you panned back, you still can't decide. If you panned back, there's four drivers right here with Show your heads off that Trevor's going to town with. 
Yeah. We got one, two, three, and four. Before this video. All four different drivers that Trevor is, he just These can't These are four stop. of them, I can't stop. You know why? Because if I have a bad day driving, I think it's the club. Yeah. And then I'm like, I gotta go hit some and see what club will do better. Because I wanna know. And I, hand me something that feels good and I'll play it. Okay. All right. We need to do a giveaway. All, All right, right, guys, so we have a giveaway to announce. We are announcing the giveaway from the video where we did the Zipcor Cleveland Wedge. And today's video, we're gonna be giving away a dozen PXG balls. But for this video, the giveaway from that Cleveland video, the winner of a Cleveland Wedge with the Zipcor technology is Austin Calavera. His comment was, I have the RTX4 and love them. Thank you for the support, Austin. Thank you for being a subscriber and a commenter. Hit up our YouTube uh, videographer, Topher, Chris here, and he'll get you all your details to ship you out that Cleveland wedge, man. Congratulations, good All right, man. what are we giving away today? We are giving away a dozen PXG golf balls. Should we do two, two dozen? Let's do two. Two dozen PXG golf balls. You know why we're gonna do two? I found my first PXG golf ball the other day. That's awesome, you know why we're gonna do two? Why? I'm sorry, I could've acted more excited. I, found I just my dismissed first, it. My first PXG golf ball. I, I kind of that. ignored you. Go ahead. Uh, Why are we doing two? Because we haven't sold any. We have piles of them. <laughs> so we'll do two. All right. What do you have to do to win those two? You have to subscribe and you have to comment in this video and you could win two dozen PXG balls. That's all you got to do. Thanks for watching, guys. Check out our next video. Please subscribe. It helps us out a ton. I'm surprised we both chose ca Cavity Back. I'm surprised too. I thought I was going Cavity Back and you were going Gen 6. See, I thought you were going Gen 6 because you love Gen 6. Do I ever. I couldn't hit Not it. Not anymore. Couldn't hit it. Guess what? Tate's got a different club in the bag. Got to see what it is. Stay tuned, guys.